Corey here, Good News Goods. If you're new to the channel, do reselling stuff like that. And I figured I would bring this video to um, share with you guys a free laptop I got. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen a picture of it. It's just an old Dell Inspiron 1501, uh, old AMD dual core in it. It's a fairly old PC. I'd say it was probably like, oh, four, I think was the manufacture date. Had Windows Vista on it, that's garbage program. Um, all I've done so far is upgraded it four gigs of RAM and I put a fresh install of Windows 7 on it, did all the driver updates. And the only other thing I'm gonna do is kind of pull it apart and clean all the dust off and put some new CPU paste on the well, on the CPU because it's pretty dusty and dirty in there so I don't want it to be overheating or like thermal throttling. Okay, so uh, some of you guys may have already seen this computer on uh, Instagram. I did share it, it was free. It came with the charger. Quick tip, if you guys can get a free laptop with the charger, don't even worry about year, make, model, don't worry about any of that stuff because I've never seen the chargers sell for like under $15, so you're automatic $15 to $75 for the laptop charger. So I mean, I said yes, just even just for the charger alone. But this thing uh, was in working order when I got it, you can see the face here is really scratched up. There are some scuffs on it. Uh, if I turn it around, the back's pretty nice. None of this is cracked. Things you want to watch for maybe is a lot of screws missing because that's a good indicator somebody's maybe been into this machine already. Um, I have. I All I did though is I popped open right here, just this little cover, two Phillips screws, and there's DDR2 RAM in there. I upgraded it to four gigs of RAM. There was only one gig, which honestly isn't even great for Vista, uh, and I've loaded Windows 7 on it. And something cool about this, the battery here, which is good, it holds a charge, has a little button you can push, and it gives you LED light indicators on how full the battery is. Okay, so before I get uh, really into this, I guess I should explain some of the tools you'll probably need. Just a small Phillips screwdriver, uh, maybe a little bit of a larger one too, I don't know if this one will come in handy. Uh, flathead, just sometimes you need it for just popping the plastic pieces off. Smaller flathead for more detailed work. And uh, this might be dead, but... Uh, it's losing power. I like to use this electronic one too, if the screws aren't stripped, because this can strip them. So first thing, we'll take off all the back brackets. There you go. There's your RAM sticks. Those are both two gig DDR2 RAMs. If you ever want to pop them out, we'll take them out just to show you. There's just two little tabs here. Move them aside, RAM pops right out. Move that out of the way. These don't actually need to come out for what we're doing. Just for reference sake for you guys, I figured I'd share it with you. Uh, I'm gonna get a little container for the screws as well. So basically around the perimeter of here, there's a whole bunch of screws. This looks like it holds on the back casing will give me access to the motherboard. So I'm gonna start removing all those. And that little electric drill is dying. So, just gonna have to use manual power. Oh my God, the same driver. Maybe not. Knock around. Should have pre-charged this thing. Okay, so that's all the back screws taken off. Now you think this would just pop right off and it, it is really loose. You can pull on it a bit, but there are two very hidden screws. One under that one and one under that right there. So you're just gonna wanna take your screwdriver and pop those off. A lot of times they won't stick back on. If that's the case, I just pop a little bit of glue on there and I stick them back on. Again, they'll be Phillips. Pop these out. Had my electronic drill not died, this would have been a lot quicker.
All right, now I believe I should be able to pop this bezel off. Gently, anyways. It really fights you. You don't want to crack it. There it goes. Pull it the rest of the way up. You gotta be sorta of rough and sorta of gentle with it, so there's no ribbon plugs on this. When you push the power button, it's just a rubber button that pushes right here. So I mean, essentially you can still turn it on if you want it from right there. That's that for that. See, it just clips on. It sticks on these pretty good, so you gotta give it a good pull. Um, these are just clear plastic to help transfer light for your power, hard drive usage, and uh, I'm assuming if you're running low on power, if it's plugged in. So hopefully you guys can see the keyboard, but basically you got a screw there, a screw there, and this should pop out after that. Again, you'll have to use a little bit of force and there'll be a little ribbon plug underneath this keyboard that you'll wanna watch for. Take note too, if the screws, don't lose it, are different sizes, this little tiny screw holding the keyboard in is a smaller size than all those back casing screws. So you do kinda wanna set that separately or at least make a mental note of it. Or if you guys are really, really new to taking apart a computer, easiest thing I can suggest for you guys is just take pictures as you go and make notes so that you don't have to try and remember as you go back. Now this should, goes, pop right out. There we go. So you lift that up, turn that over. There's that little ribbon plug. It is plugged in right here. These are super sensitive. They can break and bend easy, but usually all you do, let me get the camera zoomed in. There's a little tab you just lift up right there and it just lifts up and that's how you release the ribbon plug. I'm going to zoom into that so you guys can get a better view of it. So this is your ribbon plug. This is where it plugs in. You can use a screwdriver if you want to. Be careful if you're going to use a screwdriver because you don't want to scratch or like dent the ribbon plug. But you just lift this little latch up. See and it just it's just a little latch. It folds up and this will pull right out. And it's, it's all a ribbon plug is guys. It's very small. We'll set this aside. But now, you can see we've gained pretty good access to the computer. The last thing to detach will most likely be the screen held on by two screen brackets and um, just the screen plug. So I'll get the camera zoomed back out to give you guys an overview of this and we'll get this all popped off. Okay, so at this point, I'd say we are at uh, disassembling the screen. I wanna mention to you guys, this is actually pretty new for me too. I've never uh, taken one of these exact models apart. Um, it looks like the screen is just held on by the two brackets here and then the power cords kind of run through. Uh, it looks like the Wi-Fi antennas run through here too. But I'm going to pop off one of these rubber uh, screen closing stoppers, whatever you want to call it, to see if, yeah, there is. So there's these little stoppers on the screen. I'll drag the screen more into frame. So the screen has these little stoppers that go all the way around it and under the stoppers is a little Phillips screw. So that will probably get the bezel off which will allow me to unplug the screen ribbon which is probably right about here uh, and which will let me get all of this bezeling off. So it can be a bit of a process doing this stuff. These you can usually pop, oh okay so note to self for you guys, the top ones don't seem to have screws hiding under them. They just seem to be clips so don't worry about the top rubbers it's just it seems to be just the two bottom corners pop that one off too that one's really in there, there go pop these off maybe this detaches the screen we will find out at this point i'm pretty much just taking parts off Okay, so the screen actually just came off with the two bracket screws. Uh, it, so you don't actually, it, by the looks of it, you don't need to take that bezel off while it's removing. We'll see. Uh, the Wi-Fi wires run through here, but the Wi-Fi is really easy. These little links just pop out. And I'm gonna see if this is the ribbon plug for the screen so that I can detach the screen. It does look like it is with a little maybe ground screw there. So this is your Wi-Fi card. Um, you can see it from the back side too. I'm not gonna turn this over because it's all apart. But these are your two wires running to it and literally if you just give them little tugs, they, they come off with like no force. You shouldn't really have to pull at them. And then this is our ribbon plug for the monitor. Usually, if you'll see 
Oh, I gotta adjust the camera. So yeah, that's the Wi-Fi cords taken off. That gets the monitor slide out. And now there's just the main kind of ribbon plug that sends information from the motherboard to the screen to give you your image. We gotta get that unplugged. So a lot of the ribbon plugs, the keyboard didn't have it. This does. There'll be a little flap on it like this, and that will allow you to just pull that right out. And then there is a little screw there. Uh, I'm not sure if that is a ground screw or just to keep, oh, it's a very small screw, or just to keep uh, the plug from coming out for the monitor. Okay, so the bezel is about ready to take off. I did notice there is one sunk in screw right here. So that will have to come off. That was still holding it on the board when I gave it a little tug. That put it in our bowl. Again, guys, if you have a hard time remembering this stuff, if you're doing it at home, try taking pictures. Like take a picture of that and write on your picture, like uh, label it um, plug for monitor, just so you can remember until you get the hang of it and you sort of just know what you're looking at. Uh, there we go. Oh yeah, before we pop that all the way off, this right here is the mouse ribbon plug. So we're gonna pop the mouse trackpad plug off. And right here, I'm not sure what this is. It feels like it's for the, yeah, it's for the screen. So when the screen opens and closes, there's a little tab here that pushes down. That just runs to here, plugs in. So that's just a simple, boop, little three pin plug. And then this should come off. There's another part you can sell if you want as well. So that's the bezel removed. This bezel is really dirty. So while there is bare minimal electronics on it, uh, I'm gonna clean this up. Maybe even hit it with some of that Plastex polish. So now you can see we're down to just basically the motherboard. Uh, if we turn the front, there is the dirty, dirty CPU cooler, um, or sorry, I should say fan. CPU will be right here, copper pipe, heat transfers here. Fan exhausts the heat out the back. That's basically how cooler works. This is your CD drive. This is where your hard drive goes, and that's, that's about it. That's CMOS battery. If your computer ever doesn't save the date and time, it's because that is dead. Um, now, the only thing I want to get off is this because this is our CPU cooler and it looks like there's one, two, three, four bolts holding it on uh, and I am going to take the fan cooler off too just to clean it up because it is very, very dusty. So we'll get these taken off and uh, we'll clean up the CPU, get some new thermal paste put on her. So here's a closer view of that CPU cooler. I'm gonna lift it up. Hopefully this camera picks this up. But each screw, that screw has a one, that screw has a two, that screw has a three beside it, and this screw has a four. Now if you guys don't know what that is, it's telling you which direction to start each screw so that you get proper pressure all around the CPU. So basically when you're putting this back on, you'd wanna, get my hand out of the way, you'd wanna tighten the screw number one, followed by two, followed by three, followed by four, to give it an even tighten down, because sometimes if you tighten this one down and this one down, it'll tighten down on an angle, and then when you try and tighten these ones down, it'll fold it and bend the cooler. Um, same thing goes for wheels and stuff on cars, so that's just why I thought it was neat to see that. And again, there's that dirty CPU cooler fan, so we are gonna take that out too, just to get rid of the dust. Uh, it's just held on by, it looks like a Phillips screw here, Phillips screw there, and then just the little power plug there. Okay, so the screws are loosened on the CPU cooler. Uh, oh, that one lifted off easy. Sometimes these CPU coolers, the paste gets really old, and becomes very sticky, and these will almost feel glued on. Do not put a screwdriver in and just start prying like that because you'll wreck tracers and all these little elements in here. Uh, if you do have to do that, what I recommend is go somewhere where it's safe, like on top of the CD drive, put something underneath it and lift like that so you're never torquing down on the motherboard. But this popped off pretty easy, so we'll pop this out. That's the cooler. There's the old CPU paste. Uh, that would be the chipset CPU paste there. We're gonna replace both. There's your or your uh, graphics card. Sorry, I don't know why I call it chipset. Technically, it's a chipset. That's your graphics processor, processor, your ATI. This is the cooler for it. Um, it looks like it got pretty damn hot at one point, and it's pretty dusty. There's the old CPU paste. So we're gonna clean off all this CPU paste. If you guys are also curious, or curious, this is your CPU right here. How these come off, there's a lock and an unlock button. It is a Socket S1. Uh, looks like it was a Foxconn motherboard too. Just give this a turn, boop. CPU is now unlocked and you just, oh, this one's in here really good. You just give it a bit of a pull and it should pop out. I don't really need to pop this one out. If you guys are also curious, you can. 
There we go. I just didn't have it turned all the way. Also, we are going to pop off this very, very dirty CPU fan. Exhaust fan, CPU fan, CPU cooling fan, whatever you want to call it. Just one screw. Here's the two screw. Now, best way to clean these up if, oh yeah, and there's a little plug. Come out. Ugh. Best way to clean these up is just a can of compressed air or a fan. When you blow these out, always, always, always stick a screwdriver in so that the blades don't spin. The reason for that is if you stick air through this and you just fire air in here, this fan's gonna spin faster than it's ever spun before and you'll smoke the bearings out of it or cause a very noisy fan. So, we'll get this all dusted off. This cleaned out with the dust, cause my God, that's gross. And uh, we'll get the cooler back on there, some new thermal paste and boot this back up. So we got our CPU cooler all cleaned up. Uh, as you can see, there's no more dust in here. All the pads are cleaned up. We're gonna reassemble that and we're gonna put our CPU back in the socket. When uh, putting the CPU back in, there is a tiny little arrow here that you wanna line up with a corresponding marker, which would be right here on the motherboard. And basically just the pins are there. This should take no pressure whatsoever. Line it up, drop it in, and it should just set right in. You shouldn't have to push it or pry it or anything like that. A little bit of thermal paste on there still. And then we'll just turn this back to the locked position. And then there we go. CPU is seated in. And then like I said, there is our thermal cooler, our heat spreader, heat sink, whatever you want to call it. It sits just like so. And that's basically how it goes. But before we attach that, we have to put some thermal paste on the CPU and the graphics chipset. So, not a lot, just a. This is gonna squirt out so fast. This hasn't been used in a while. If you guys haven't used your uh, CPU paste in a while, maybe actually find something to squirt this into. I got a rag over here. Let me get this. Mainly because it can become a little separated sometimes and it'll come out a little runny. You don't want that. Okay, this is coming out pretty good. Um, just a pointer, uh, this is a little bit no name. If you guys want to use a good CPU cooler, use like Arctic 5 or Arctic 7. Uh, that's about what you need for the CPU paste. A little bit on that graphics cooler. That's way too much. But we'll spread that. spread it around okay so here's our exhaust fan all cleaned up I don't know if you guys saw that before it was much much dustier so we're gonna reassemble that that just drops into place like so has the little tiny tiny power plug we'll plug that back in little three pin fan power and then we just got the screw and a screw to put in fish them out of my screw boxes this is when you guys would have wanted to take note of the screws because these were actually different size than the rest. So this is basically ready for assembly, um, which is pretty straightforward. It's just reverse of how we took it apart. Uh, but for that was plugged in all the way. Before I do that, I'm going to clean up these plastics. Uh, hopefully the camera's picking it up. Like we got some sticker residue here from an old Intel sticker. There's some dirt in the cracks and crevices along here, and just. Some generalized scratching in the plastic. Uh, the screen or the back of the screen is much worse. I don't think I'll be able to do much about that. I can get it a little better, we'll see. But what I'm going to use first, if you guys have seen any of my videos, you can probably already guess, is Plastex. So I'm gonna grab that and get this cleaned up. Hopefully the camera's picking it up. It's just a basic microfiber, some Plastex. All I do is just a little dab on the microfiber and I just go around working it in in small circles. too kind of interrupting my 
PC build here. Uh, if you're watching this video, another thing to pay attention for this stuff is everything you've seen me doing is the same amount of work if you want to sell the parts out of these things. This laptop is a perfect example where the parts will bring way more money than the whole laptop. This thing complete depending on the operating system that they have loaded on it and the amount of RAM they have in it and CPU. So there are some factors. It brings anywhere from $40 to $100 uh, if it's like fully refreshed and clean. Now looking at parts and I'll share some maybe parts listings if I can get my computer to save the listing images. We're at work here right now. Honestly, the, the office computer here sucks. It's, it sucks big balls. <laughs> but anyways, just the keyboard alone. So this little piece I took out working condition is bringing $25 to $30. That's already half the cost of most of the laptops online for this model, if not more. The little back RAM cover piece, this was bringing $15. With sales too, so not just like that's what it listed for, that's with sales. So just right there, we're over the cost of a lower end one of these with like the single core processor. There's where you want to look at parting it out. The battery's good on this, that's another $25. The charger is good, that's another $15 to $20. Uh, the screen's good. That's another $35 to $40. The front bezel's a little bit up and cracked, but you can probably still get $5 to $10. The motherboard's working with the CPU. That's about another $60. Bucks. Um, so if you add all that up, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to do the math in my head, but I know it's over $100. It's well over $100. Uh, negatives to that, though, you guys are going to sit on the parts longer. You're going to have to store the parts, and you're going to have to hope something like the motherboard doesn't just stop working while being stored. Yes, that can happen. Capacitors can leak, CMOS batteries can die, tracers can get scratched on the motherboard, and that will just basically DOA, just dead on arrival motherboard. Um, so if you want to get into part stuff out, be prepared for returns. Don't get upset for returns. If they drive you nuts, don't even touch this stuff because they come in a lot, like 30% returns. Uh, I don't want that to break. Those little clips are kind of loose on it. I don't want to do it yet. I can do this. So to be safe, I'm going to take this, which I already polished. I'm gonna put this on it like this, basically so I'm not applying pressure to the lock clips here. They will just fit in the slots um, on the actual laptop. As long as I line them up correctly, there we go. Now I'm not hurting the screen to polish this sucker. that ribbon plug attached basically we just got to do the uh, the Wi-Fi here um, I should have noted too, to you guys pay attention to which way these go because the white and black wire there is a sequence to them um, I had to just look that back up but I know what it is so we're okay actually on this there is a arrow white arrow black arrow black to black white to white it's as easy as that it should just take a little bit of pressure and pushing to get them to clip on not a lot same as coming off, they don't take much. If you feel like you're forcing it, you probably don't have it lined up. So there's that one in, now we just get the white one in. There we go. Okay. Now we can reassemble the keyboard. Put those two back screws back in again, and uh, then we'll attach the monitor.
Time to finish this thing up. The screen's been all cleaned up. Um, everything's been put back together. It's just the back half now. Just taking a couple sips of coffee. And we'll do all these screws first and then we'll do all the components. I'll insert the pictures after but basically I'll just run through it quickly you guys are looking minus the crop because I know on this side you can see some of the side uh, this would be the first picture you'd see maybe a little higher like this uh, cropped out a little bit but just to show the computer is on and working um, and then the next picture basically I would just close it down I would take a picture of like the top like that probably the very front and then uh, it does look nice turn it around get one of the sides so they can see it's like a DVD ROM drive around the back so everyone can see the connections uh, usually I'll do one in the back like this and then I'll zoom it in and I'll do another one close up like that that just kind of shows ooh, cut blurry on me. that just kind of shows everyone some of the inputs it has and then again turn it once more um, you can unplug the cord it's not necessary snap a picture of that side like that and then uh, this is kind of hard because I'm holding the camera now guys so sorry if it got a little shaky but basically I would turn it upside down again I would probably block to some of the service information there um, you can put a little piece of tape over it or just blur it out in like a photo editor but basically I would take a picture of the back like that and then uh, one of just the charging cord on its own and then because there are some scratches and they're hard to see I would zoom right into that Dell logo and take that photo just so people can see these scuff marks and I will point these out in the listing and then uh, eBay likes you using a lot of images so usually I'll take one more of the model number like that another close one at just the keyboard like that an eBay listing is just an, an eBay listing um, information would just basically the title would say uh, Dell Inspiron 1501 laptop 4 gigabyte RAM uh, 320 gig hard drive dual core CPU because you want to kind of get all that information in there I guess so people know what it is and then in the description it would say uh, fully cleaned and uh, new thermal paste applied to Dell Inspiron 1501 overall clean condition has some mild scratching on the face screen is clean free of scratches and marks everything has been tested to be in perfect working order the system has been fully pulled apart with all new thermal paste applied and dust removed a fresh operating system of Windows 7 has been installed with a valid uh, Windows 7 product key and then that, that'd be it guys that would basically be the description for this uh, worldwide shipping available uh, Wi-Fi because it has Wi-Fi make sure you mention that and uh, that'd be about it to pack this thing it would go in a flatter box kind of like an Amazon box I would just bubble wrap the crap out of this and then I would bag the cord separately even bubble wrap the cord and then it would go in a box um, make sure guys if you put it in a box that see my hand between there make sure you got about half half inch of room or so and then just pack around that with bubble wrap uh, extra cardboard packing paper or even better styrofoam corners because when this is in a box if it gets knocked that way or it gets knocked that way or the box gets kicked if this is just sitting against the box with a tiny bit of bubble wrap it's easy to smack that and break that if you have some cushioning in there whether it be paper or like I said styrofoam is the best it'll hit the styrofoam and that'll take up most of the impact and it won't be felt in here um, that's about all the tips I have for shipping one of these things when this does sell I'll make a video on shipping a laptop just so you guys can see how exactly I ship it um, so yeah, that's about it though. I'm gonna let you guys go because I got to get this thing listed as always guys Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video If you have any suggestions or want to see something different, please leave them down in the comments uh, I try to get to every comment sometimes I slack on that my apologies If you do like this content subscribe for more give me a thumbs up to let me know and uh, I will be back with another video Hopefully very soon. Take care everyone